what we're looking at here is the steering column out of this 2008 Mercury Mariner hybrid uh, and this is an electronic power steering uh, setup. And so what we have down here on this end of the column is we actually have our power assist motor um, rather than having a um, hydraulic pump with power steering fluid. We have this motor here that helps the, uh, the driver, provides assist to the driver to turn the column. On the bottom side here you can see we've got, we've got a few different things going on. Um, we, we have um, our uh, control unit that uh, controls this electronic system uh, incorporated into this assembly. Uh, also the torque sensor uh, which is uh, an item that's known to fail fairly regularly also incorporated into here and uh, on the the old column for the old power assist unit that's sitting right there we actually have a uh, a problem with that torque sensor and so that is what uh, is causing us to have to replace this this column now on the end of the the column you can see we have things like uh, Oh, the uh, ignition switch is in there, and then uh, some of the brackets and such that hold things like the, the turn signal switch and everything else. And this column will actually come in half. It'll actually separate into a couple of pieces if you just if you pull it apart like that. And so what that allows us to do then is it allows us to be able to just take this piece because when you get the new part from Ford it's going to contain the whole entire column rather than just rather than just this uh, assembly with the motor. Um, you can pull this apart and that way you don't have to take this apart any more than it already is and you can take this whole this piece and put it on your new your new motor there. Um, the other thing that this allows you to do that is that as you're pulling this apart you can you can unbolt this portion first, the column will drop down, you can actually slide that out and remove it um, and then go in and undo this bolt up here that, uh, that the motor assembly pivots on and um, by, uh, by pulling this out of the way it makes it much easier to get this, this piece out and so what we're going to do is we're going to install this all uh, underneath the, back underneath the, the dash of this car and, um, and we're going to install this piece first uh, before we take this. Now the good thing here is that on, on our splines down in there, it's kind of hard to see because they're all they're all coated in grease, but anyway, uh, there's only one way to index the top half of the column. So it only goes together one way, which is good uh, because we don't have to worry about making sure we keep track of the exact alignment as we pull these pieces apart. So we're going to install this piece under the dash first and down under the dash we have this big gaping hole now so back in here this is where the the steering shaft from the the rack and pinion comes up through now this has electronic power steering it still has rack and pinion steering it's just that the rack and pinion steering is just a rack and pinion assembly instead of being um, instead of having any any of the hydraulic stuff integrated into it it's just a plain uh, rack and pinion like on the old cars that had no power steering at all. So next we will install that motor back into here. So here is the motor installed. You can see it pivots on that uh, that mount uh, back in the back that I that I pointed out earlier. You can't really see it anymore from here but the shaft back there Okay, you can see that hooks up back there right behind the motor. You actually have to bolt that on first before you put the motor assembly in. And then, of course, we have a, a few we have a few electrical connectors here that um, have to be hooked up. That one there is our kind of our power feed. And then this one over here is uh, have our, our power and ground and communication lines and everything that powers up the, the module 
that controls the power steering. So now with this piece in place, it moves up and down because that's part of the, the tilt column setup. Um, now we can we can take this piece and slide it in over this and it's going to bolt on here and here. Okay, now we have the the top half of the column installed. You can see everything down underneath there. Uh, that silver bolt right there is one of the bolts that holds it in. It's another one just like it right there on the other side. And uh, you can see the column tilts like it's supposed to. And now we're ready to put uh, the switches back on it, our multifunction switch, and our clock spring. And then we can put all the trim bits back on. But uh, you can see it's really, really pretty simple. Not much to do in this. The only other note is that when you are taking this apart on this lower trim piece between here and here, you'll find this plastic piece. And uh, this is actually goes about right there. And, th and that's just part of the. Um, uh, to keep these things sturdy through the manufacturing process. Um, when they put these together in the factory, that of course stays there. But in order to get this column out, you're going to completely remove it. Just cut it out and leave it out. Because this really serves no other function when, the, when, this, when this panel is installed in the vehicle. As you can see, this goes all the way up around the dash on this Mariner. So. Um, make sure you cut that piece out when you are going back together. Um, once we get this all put back together we're going to have to initialize the power steering system. Um, and that's kind of an initialization of the, the torque angle sensor, the torque sensor or steering angle sensor, whatever you want to call it. And um, we will uh, we'll, we'll cover that in another video.